the clearest example we have of righteous indignation in scripture, if you want to use that kind of English terminology, is the episode of Moses with the golden calf when he came down from the mountain and he was consumed by a holy righteous anger when he saw what had taken place in his absence when he was communicating with God or communing with the Lord to receive the Decalogue and he came down and the people were worshiping the golden calf. That is righteous anger. That is a holy indignation. The anger of man will never achieve the righteousness of God. We must be very, very careful. The apostles wanted to call down fire and judgment, and Jesus told them not to do it. There are times for that to happen. The two witnesses in Revelation will indeed do that when the age of grace draws to an end. We see instances where Peter dealt with Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts. But we must be very, very careful and led of the Holy Spirit, not of our own flesh, our own anger, or our own indignation. We can indeed become angry at things. I become boiling angry. When I saw Barack Obama use White House stationery to send out letters to schools with veiled threats to withhold federal funding from schools that they didn't allow boys to avail themselves of the locker and laboratory facilities with girls and things of this nature. I wanted God's judgment to come on Barack Obama, and I still do. I want the judgment of God to come on that evil man. He's irrepentant. He's wicked. I want to see God deal with him. But I cannot call down fire or pray for Lee Harvey Oswald. I can just pray that God will deal with him. <clears throat> the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. I was so maltreated at a medical clinic this past week. It was absolutely unbelievable what happened to me. Absolutely unbelievable what happened to me. But while I was in the clinic, I didn't show any display of anger. I didn't begin yelling and, and, and or or saying anything profane or, 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 or threatening. I simply wrote a letter of complaint. Uh, we have to be able to control angry emotions. Now I say that about people like me who can be very easily propelled towards anger, and a lot of Christians can be. This is not holy anger. Holy anger is when we are consumed by the righteousness of God and we are vehicles for expressing his anger. It's his anger, as it were, being channeled through us directly by the Holy Spirit. We are not speaking of ourselves or our own indignation, even though we may be indignant. Again, the classical biblical example is Moses and the golden calf. We also see instances in the New Testament when the apostles became so outraged at people who were hurting the church. Paul, writing in Galatians, under the direct influence of the Holy Spirit, used some very strong language in the Greek text, that those who were trying to propel or compel believers to undergo ritual circumcision, what he actually says in Greek is, I wish they would emasculate themselves, engage in full castration. Don't just stop with circumcision. Go for full emasculation. That's how angry he was. But that was not the anger of Paul. That was the anger of the Lord going through Paul. Now, what a strong thing to say. I wish you would emasculate yourself. I wish that you would castrate yourself and remove your genitals completely rather than hurt the church like this. Again, if you're going to speak that way, you better know it's the Lord. You better know it's the Holy Spirit. The apostles tried to call down fire and brimstone and Jesus rebuked them and told them not to do it. It must be the Lord working through us. Again, it is not a thing for new believers. It takes some time of walking with Jesus to become attuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit that acutely, where <clears throat> you understand that it is God and God alone and not your own self that's initiating what you're going to say, or what it is you're going to do. Of course, the <clears throat> ultimate example of righteous indignation of holy anger 
although the quintessential example for us is Moses, the ultimate example is Jesus himself dealing with the money changers in the temple when he made the, the whip of cords and he drove them out of the temple and overturned their tables. This is holy anger. This is the perfect picture of the anger of God. But Jesus, of course, was God. Now notice something. Jesus did not display that kind of anger towards Pilate. He did not display that kind of anger even towards Herod. He did not display that kind of anger towards thieves or tax gatherers or prostitutes. He did display that kind of anger towards religious hypocrites who are exploiting the sheep of God. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't for the sake of brevity uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, a questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.